Hello, my name is Michael Smith. I'm from the uh, Save Water Alliance. And I wanted to talk to you today about rainwater and rainwater tanks. Um, we get a lot of questions and I'm gonna try and bring a whole lot of stuff together into one talk. So, rain obviously falls on your roof. Um, in terms of catchment, you'll get a litre of water for every square metre of roof area and every millimetre of rain. So if you need to calculate, it's a pretty simple calculation. Just work out how many square metres of uh, roof area you've got and that'll give you an idea of how much water is going to be flowing into that tank with a normal rain event. Uh, a good rule of thumb is you want to have about enough water in your rainwater tank for four weeks worth of use in summer. So that gives you a good idea. But it's very important when you're thinking about your rainwater tank to not just think about summer, think about all year round use. So we very strongly recommend that people connect the rainwater tank back into their toilet. And I've had toilets that flush with rainwater for years and it's a very satisfying feeling every time you use it, but also into your washing machine because that water quality is quite good for your washing machine. In urban areas, there are problems with drinking it and in the country, people have been drinking it for years and they seem to be pretty healthy out there. So it's come off your roof, it's hit the gutter. Gutter design is actually a fairly important thing too. Um, nobody wants to go up and have to clean a whole lot of leaves out of their gutter. It's, it's difficult and it's actually dangerous. A lot of people have hurt themselves. So if you can look at a design where the leaves are naturally shed, that's going to save you a lot of work. Um, it also means that there's less chance of, you know, some yucky stuff accumulating in your gutter and potentially contaminating your water. So look at that gutter design if you get the opportunity. Most of us just got an existing gutter and that's fine for collecting rainwater. As it comes down, you'll need to divert water off the, the downpipe into the tank and you can then use that water for a whole lot of things. But under the plumbing regulations, at some point the overflow from the tank, even if it's flown quite a long way away, has got to go back to stormwater. So we've got the tank here. I've talked a little bit about sizing. Um, placement's quite important too. We recommend a registered plumber because you'll need him or her to work on the downpipe. But that'll also give you some comments about a base. I like to put it on concrete. A lot of the big tanks just sit on sand. Um, so, you know, it's something that you want to give a little bit of thought to. You want to make sure it's not a shifting place. Obviously, it needs to be safe. So this is a Colourbond tank. It's a beautiful colour. It's going to match your roof. Um, the colours these days are terrific, they really blend in nicely into the natural environment but there's a lot of tank options out there. You can have tanks made out of steel, you can have them made out of plastic, you can have them made out of fibreglass or concrete, they can be above ground, they can be below ground, you can have great big hanging tanks that sit in um, between, uh, the, uh, between the foundations in your house um, or under a big deck. Um, we very much recommend that people think about where the tank's going to go when you build your house. But if you're doing a renovation, that's a good time to think too. Retrofitting under the house can be quite expensive, but if you can combine it with another job, it's actually very cheap. And you're creating an asset that's going to be worth a lot for your house. So that's just a little bit about rainwater tanks. Um, we recommend them. You'll find you get a good feeling every time you use them, and they do add to the value of your house. Cheers.